kitty. Good morning. Um, yes, we love the bells and we're so thankful that uh, Teresa Carpenter was nice enough to to do that with her handbell choir. She uh, She's an amazing woman. She wrote the music and had her uh, handbell choir make that for us and it's pretty incredible. So we will play that for the rest of this month. Um, yeah, we're going to be on the road a lot, but we'll play that even when we're on the road because it's in Hugh's phone. So Hugh promised that we were going to do Sentimental Sunday. So um, I thought, and this is nothing against kitties, but I'm going to read a story about the love of a dog. Um, but this is the love of a kitty right here. That's Kitty Star. She'll be 19 in February. Hi, head bump. And she's the one who's got the big old lung cancer sitting in there. But she's been eating pretty well lately because Hugh's been making her uh, chicken thighs. She loves baked chicken thighs. And um, we've been making fresh eggs in the morning and giving her cooked egg yolks. Well, lightly cooked. She likes them runny. Uh, so she's been some, getting some decent nutrition. So um, for Sentimental Sunday, I'm going to read an article that I found. Uh, this was written... December 11th, 2016, by a woman, I believe her name is Lindsay Detweiler, and it's just her blog, uh, But and I think this was in the Huffington Post, and I just thought that it was a, a nice story about the love of a dog. Does that thing live in your house? I'll show you the picture of the thing. <laughs> and this dog looks very similar to the dog, that the puppy that Hugh had when I met him, Harley. Harley went back to live on the farm in Virginia because he was, oh my gosh, he was crazy. All right, does that thing live in your house? It was a blustery December day, and Henry and I were at the local Christmas parade in our small town. Floats of townspeople dressed as Santa and dancing teddy bears drifted by, tossing candy and sweets. Henry's brown eyes were focused on the cookies flying toward us, my mittens fumbling to break open a bag to share with my best friend. The woman's face was turned up in disgust at the sight of Henry sitting on the curb, slobber flying as he anxiously awaited his snack. Yep, they drool. Although my only children are four-legged and furry, the mothering instinct kicked in. How many of us have been there? I wanted to read the woman the riot act for talking about Henry like he was some repulsive beast, but I pulled it together and managed and, of course dripping with sarcasm. Henry isn't your average dog, it's true. No mastiff is. At three years old, he's 160 pounds of fur, slobber, and paws. And he's not done growing yet. In reality, when I walk him, he looks more like a small pony walking down the street instead of a dog. Living with a mastiff certainly has its downfalls. We spend a lot of money on food and medicine. Instead of a dog bed, we had to buy a twin-size mattress for him to sleep on. His plate-sized paws leave muddy prints on our living room floor. Oh, I think I lost something. Still, despite his couch-eating antics as a puppy, two destroyed pairs of shoes, a pierced can of Coca-Cola spraying on the ceiling, and several embarrassing moments, I wouldn't trade Henry for anything. What he's taught me and what he gives to me far outweighs any monetary or space sacrifices. Henry shows me undying, unconditional love and what it truly means. It doesn't matter if I'm rocking a smoky eye in a red dress or my holy sweatpants from high school. He looks at me exactly the same. Those brown eyes piercing into mine tell me he sees me for who I am. The superficial stuff doesn't matter to him. On days I'm jumping around the house in joy over a sudden success, he's right there with me, nipping at my arm, barking in glee, running around the house as fast as a mastiff possibly can in a modestly sized home. On days I'm wallowing in darkness, the death of another pet, or just frustration at life getting the best of me, Henry's there too. He's there with his huge paws on my leg, his slobbery face in mine, to reassure me it will all be okay. When I look into his eyes on those days, I know nothing could make him love me any less. No matter how much of a failure I feel like, he's always there, excited to see me, and happy to spend time with me. Henry shows me that sometimes love and life 
are about the small moments. I see his sheer glee at the first snow of the year as he galoops through the yard, flurries flying underneath his elk-like legs. I see his happiness as he jumps around in his $10 sprinkler I, brought him, I bought him last year. I see his contentment sitting on the couch with the family with his zebra toy from his first Christmas. He's happy as can be just watching a movie during a quiet night at home. Life is hard. It's no secret. There are days we ask ourselves why, days we feel alone, and days we feel like giving up. But sometimes it's the love of a dog that keep us go keeps us going, as silly as that sounds. If you're not a dog person, you might not understand. In fact, you might think it seems crazy. If you've never had that bond, looking at a dog, especially one as big as Henry, you probably see work, money, and frustration. You see all the sacrifices. You might ask, does that thing live in your house? But if you've ever experienced that almost indescribable bond, then you understand. You recognize the value of an unconditionally beautiful relationship. You see that the sacrifices are nothing compared to the benefits you reap. You see how, on your darkest days, it's those eyes, that comforting look, that paw in your hand, that keeps you going. The love of a dog isn't free. It requires patience, time, and sometimes an acceptance of fur and slobber everywhere. Still, the love of a dog is one of the greatest gifts this life can give. It changes you. It makes you prioritize your life. And it shows you the value of a bond that is unconditional. So thank you, Lindsay, for that, because that was amazing. And perfect for Sentimental Sunday. And Jean says, that's what has and now does get me through the day. Yes, he's in the house. Wouldn't have it any other way. She's got one of these big guys. And uh, Jean was our friend who was struggling to find a place to live with her dogs and cats and birds while her house is being rebuilt from Hurricane Sandy. And she's safe and still has her dogs with her. And that's good. Oh, hi, Teresa. Thank you. 